Greetings all, welcome to the Gaming Block Podcast, your one-stop shop for all the pertinent video game news. Here we cover the news spanning across Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and more. I'm your host, Andrew Arana. Joining with me today are my co-hosts, Jacob Ward and Roger Bennon. Today, we'll be talking about the Switch Pro gaining more evidence of its, of its existence, the PlayStation 5 being in people's hands, tons of new Resident Evil news, and more. But before we get into all that, Roger, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good, Andrew. Pretty good. That's good to hear. Jake, how are you doing today? Ride 4 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Are you ready to live the best game? Oh, wait. I'm doing good. How about you? Oh, my gosh. That was such a <laughs> dumb joke. That was stupid. <laughs> this is a video game podcast. Thank you so much for downloading this or streaming this and listening to it. We appreciate you. Uh, you can get our podcast on podcast services such as iTunes, Google, Spotify, and more. And we're also uploaded onto YouTube. YouTube.com slash that one Andrew uploads every Friday without fail unless the upload gets messed up. Um, today, I already said what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about some things. Um, I'm here with Jake and Roger. Uh, it's been it's been a time. We've been setting up for 40 minutes now, would you say, boys? Something like that? Somewhere 40 minutes or okay. four hours and 40 minutes. Day, yeah, honestly, like we could have started like five hours ago. Yeah, um, well, we wouldn't have gotten the special appearance from Motorcycle if we would have started earlier, so I guess... That's true, every episode. Good things do happen <laughs> to those who wait. Um, we got a lot of news to talk about today, guys, um, but before we get into that, I do want to let the audience know that today is going to be more or less our official way that we're going to run this podcast now. Uh, over the week, I went ahead and got the new releases for video games coming out this week to all platforms. That would be PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. I'm not going to do new releases for Stadia or Luna or Ouya or whatever. We're going to stick with the main four. And also, these are going to be the biggest releases happening for these games. Well, Andrew, uh, Andrew, Andrew you, can't re- you can't forget the Atari VCS. And the Atari VCS. You know what? I will do the Atari VCS as well. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. If a mini console or something comes out and it's big enough, pertinent enough, say the N64 mini or something, you know, we will go ahead and mention that as well. But the VCS isn't a mini console. It's the most advanced console of this generation. That's that's what it says. Um, With before voice we control get... and Tempest 4000? Where could you go wrong? Before we get into all that, uh, I want to know what we've been playing this week. I myself, um, I just got done playing SingStar Celebration, which actually was which is actually a Sony exclusive game, um, believe it or not, and that was fun. It's just karaoke things like that. Uh, and other than that, I have played a little bit of Star Wars Squadrons. Ooh, how are you liking that? Um. I am liking it, I think. Uh, <laughs> okay, if you say so. It's a VR weird fun. So I played... It is a full VR game for PSVR and also Oculus on PC. Or Vibe or whatever you have on PC. So when I first played it, I played it without VR for about an hour. I did two missions in the single player, I did some multiplayer matches, and then I did an AI battle match. And mm-hmm. honestly, when I was playing it, I was like, this feels weird. It doesn't feel... The flight in the combat isn't bad. Yeah, I really feel like the scenarios that they put the multiplayer battles in and the story... There's just something about EA where they're really lacking in storytelling and with characters and making me want to give a shit, you know? Because yeah, all, I get that. all these battles and stuff are all original. There's no Death Star run. There's no Death Star 2 run. There's no Star Killer Bait, anything like that. You're not going to see the iconic mm-hmm. things from the movies, at least from what I've seen so far. So this is all them making a story, and it's so predictable. Right. And it's kind of bad, too. Um, Is it like a Battlefront 2 situation where it's just nothing new? Kind of, yeah. It, that's same kind people. of exactly what it is. Um, It's the exact same people. The story, at the beginning at least, because I only played the beginning, was that you're a new recruit on both the Empire and the Rebellion, so you switch back and forth. And right away, they make the Rebellion out to be, or the Empire out to be Nazis. Now, don't get me wrong. The Empire in Star Wars was always bad. You know, yeah. you blew up a planet. But in this game, you start right after Alderaan was destroyed, and they're like, oh, some civilians escaped on, like, transport ships. 
go kill them. It's huh. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I do not remember them being like, we're going to hunt down some I mean, million you know, trans- They just blew up Alderaan to prove a point, really. Well, well, I know, but there's there's kind of a difference between like doing that and being like, oh, by the way, no survivors. It's like, yeah, because they, they didn't go like go through that, like thinking no survivors. They were just like, we're going to blow up your planet because we can. Exactly. And, <laughs> and we that's, wanted, like, that's we're going to show you our power. You know, you guys are the damn pro empire now. <laughs> <laughs> but but and then of course like right. right away your general or something is like we have to go kill the civilians it's like well he's gonna betray you right away and of course at the end of that mission it's like wait what is he doing and then it like neutralizes your ship or something he's like are you betraying us it's like well no shit he's betraying you and it's just predictable stupid things like that the storytelling yeah. is not good in these Star Wars games. So it's like it literally, was, yeah. it's like literally like Battlefront Two, where they're like, "Wow, what this is wrong." <laughs> yeah, like um, you played that campaign bad guys? Like Battlefront Two. I never finished Battlefront Two. Don't worry I, about it. It's not. I got good. to the part with the weather machine, and I was like, uh. "Yeah," because they're the whole thing was like, "Oh, you play as the bad guys," and they switched to the good guys. Yeah, like, you're you're not, I was like genuinely excited like, yeah. for that campaign too, because me it was too. like me too. I was excited for that whole game, and then it came out, and it was trash, and I literally disowned it until it got good again. <laughs> they should have just said it in the future when you literally fight for the side that's called the Final Order if they wanted to go the Nazi route. Dude, yeah. I know. There's so many things. I I don't know. these. I mean, to give you some frame of reference, one of the writers is an ex-IGN writer. So, you know, <laughs> take that. I mean, I don't think we will. ever were going to say, give, you know, giving them the benefit of having good writers. They have definitely good people on the team for graphically. Oh, definitely, player. yeah. Sometimes. Um, the story writing team just needs some work. And you know what? It's kind of been like that with all EA games. Or yeah. at least, um, like... Well, that, that's Dice not their priority. Motive. Their priority is the multiplayer. But you think with a Star they think, Wars game... They think the single player is a side thing. It's, it's shifted. The market has shifted from being single player oriented to multiplayer oriented. That's but the they thing, feel too. like they have it to have would... a campaign just to satisfy everyone. Well, no, no, no. So I played the multiplayer. I played, mm-hmm. there's dogfights, and then there's like their big thing, the, uh, what do you call it? Flagship carrier yeah. battle, whatever Just battles. It <laughs> and it's not good. The dogfight really? is exactly what you think it is. It's just five on five dogfight. That's it. It's not big. It's not epic. It's not grand. It's not Star Wars. And then the flagship battles are not grand either. They're not exciting and they're not exhilarating they try to make it in the trailers obviously but it's just not it's super boring it's a back and forth of oh we destroyed enough of your ship so now we can attack your capital ship oops you destroyed enough of us so now we can't attack your capital ship you have to now you get a turn to attack our capital ship and it's like this is so lame and stupid and honestly it feels kind of depressing it feels like Mm -hmm. a budget game which is sad because i was hoping I was hoping with that price point, it'd be like, oh, maybe they put some effort into this and they're just doing this because it's like, hey, you know, trying to be nice. But no, they did that because it's half-assed and it is not good. So yeah. I'm. it's definitely my disappointment of the year so far. Oh, or man. expectations, at least. Like I had, I didn't have super high expectations for it, but I, I was definitely like, oh, I'm excited for this game. I'm going to get it over Crash. Um, I mean, especially with VR, you can just see the potential that that game can have. Uh huh. And even the VR, the VR is cool, but like, so I've played, I play a lot of VR. I love VR. Um, Ace Combat right. Seven is one of the coolest games to play in VR. Did and you convince me to go buy a bad game? No, no. I think multiplayer <laughs> will be fine. But Ace Combat Seven in VR, one of the best parts of that game is that it starts you in the um, fighter jet, right? Yeah, we were talking about that last time. And then what you do is you take off in the fighter jet and you feel the force of taking off and you start seeing everything go by and you're like, holy shit, this is awesome. Know what you do in Star Wars Squadrons when you get into the cockpit? It goes to a black loading screen and then you're in space. Oh, that's it's like, oh, that's awesome. This is (laughs) terrible. And even like going to you keep going into like hyperspeed, uh, light speed or whatever, and it's just not cool. It's all just Punch really the hyperspeed. It's really lame because you can see where the loading screens are and you can see where it cuts, yeah. and it's just really lame. Well, that was so. the bad thing about um, the Halo Master Chief Collection because that game used to be se- all those games used to be seamless between cutscenes and gameplay, and then 
Master Chief Collection was like, oh, now on a better hardware, we can't run these games seamlessly anymore. Yeah. So that's my what I've been playing. Um, so I recommend my things, weekly I rec- Halo insert. <laughs> yeah, on this video. <laughs> Those are weekly uh, Star Wars insert too. <laughs> yep, we always talk about Star Wars now, apparently, but get Sing Star over Star Wars Squadrons, even though the servers are down. Jake, what have you been playing? <sighs> um, so I guess what I should start. So I uh, I bought a Animal Crossing Switch because those came restocked at Best Buy and a bunch of other places, and uh, I picked one of those up, transferred all my data from my old Switch to that one, and formatted my old Switch, and then when I loaded up Animal Crossing on my new Switch, all my data was gone. All my 160-hour island was gone. So I've just been kind of uh, starting over in that. (laughs) You guys have had some pretty uh, hard experiences this week. Yes. So, I mean, I'm honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I'm actually kind of, like, reinvigorated my love for the game because now I have a bunch of things to do in it, whereas before I was kind of just checking in and being like, okay, there's nothing new today. Now I'll go back tomorrow. Yeah, um, playing like thirty second, or thirty less than thirty minute intervals. Now I go back and play for like hours again. Um, but then my pre order for uh, Super Mario Three D All Stars finally arrived this week, so I've been enjoying that a bit. Yeah. And um, we've already is, kind of discussed that, so yeah. it's not too much gameplay. Um, just just kind of you know restarting an Animal Crossing, and whenever I get done with the tasks for the day, and that I'll just hop onto Mario. Sounds man, I good, went man. from Sounds being good. addicted to that game to just never touching it. Yeah, that's Honestly. same with me. And, but now that I've like restarted, it's kind of like, oh, and I remember why I love this game so much. It seems like everybody was addicted to that game, especially when uh, all the lockdowns happened. It was like, okay, well, we got yeah, this. Yeah, it came, it came out on a pretty good time. It was around mid-July where it seems just like <laughs> everyone was like, we're done. Because mm-hmm. there is a... That is the problem with the game is that it's very um, carrot on the end of the stick game. Like, oh, do this so you can get to this goal, get to this goal, get to this goal. But then once you get all the goals, you realize that the game itself has really no substance and no yeah. gameplay. Like, well, it was, it was weird. They, inter- they kept updating it too. And I don't know. I don't know if that was a good or bad thing, but I know they like released a lot of post updates for it. But even the updates, it's like, oh, we can go swimming now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting for Animal Crossing because there's nothing to do. <laughs> like, yeah. we're so bored, and we want something to do that will literally take swimming so we can well, dive. That was the thing. Like, swimming was in the old games. It's just like you had to go to a specific place to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of like what they're doing. I mean, it keeps the game fresh. You know, when when people start to not have stuff to do, but it is kind of like well, would have been nice to have that right away. Yeah, but we've, I mean, we could talk to death about Nintendo not releasing. And that's something I've noticed too, like, restarting this. Something I don't like is, like, how long you have to wait to do certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Where, like, it didn't mind it at first because, you know, I, I had no real expectations for the game. And now that I know everything I could do, the wait just seems that much longer between when I unlock something new. Like, I have to wait. Right now, day after day, for my first three villagers to move in. There's nothing else I can do but wait for them all to move in, and then my nest tasks will appear. Uh-huh, so I have to yep. wait three whole days of like pretty much just meandering around the island. I mean, it's like I mean that's what happened to me when it first came out, and you were always like, "Oh, you're not playing Animal Crossing." I'm like, there's nothing to do, and I know if I played, I would get those uh, villagers to move in so I could progress more. But mm-hmm. I personally was just like, I can't even be bothered to do that because it's so. It's homework, and I don't want to do homework in a video game, you know? Yeah, like, I, I don't want to do that. It's not fun. And the nice thing, though, is they did add um, tasks for you to do. Like, the villagers will come up to you and be like, hey, would you do this for me? Like, they did in the original. Well, that, yeah, like in, in the GameCube one, they did like, that. And I didn't even realize that was, like, a thing, because I haven't really played any other ones except for New Leaf, and I barely played that one. So it sounds like they're making the game good. Yeah. So, they, like, I haven't noticed it yet because I, I'm wondering if it was actually something you get when you finish as well, and it may have yeah. always been there because uh, they don't want to overload you with things to do, but I'd like to just have a lot of things to do. I don't know. You can't really make your villagers mad unless you hit them in the head with a bug net. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Roger, you been playing anything this last week? Uh, I've been really busy this last week. I did run through uh, the original Call of Duty Black Ops 
uh, campaign again. So I was like kind of excited for Cold War, but it's it's a direct sequel to the original Black Ops, and I hadn't oh, played. Yeah. yeah, and I hadn't played the original Black Ops since it came out what ten years ago. Yeah, something like not that. Not longer. Um, so like I wanted to like refresh myself on the events of the campaign, and I never beat it on veteran. So I decided to re to play through it again on veteran, which uh, I don't know if I recommend that. <laughs> that game is hard. Especially the Treyarch ones on veteran. Yeah, uh, hard. Oh my god! Like not, World of War. That's like <laughs> shit. It's the wall. You put that on. It's not as bad as World of War. It's not as bad as World of War with a grenade spamming, but there are certain segments that are just really awful. And I, I, I remember the uh, the Reznov scene when you're breaking out of the prison was one that was especially. No, crazy. that wasn't even that bad for me. Like I had a couple of like moments where I I died, but that's partly because like I didn't know where I was supposed to do. You didn't know I was supposed to run past the helicopter. But, like, for me, some of the bad moments, there was, like, a certain mission where you're, like, uh, in this underground, like, rat tunnel thing. And you're, like, oh, it's just yeah. long hallways of dudes just shooting at you in every corner. And oh, you just God. can't take – you just get hit once and you're dead. And then there was another one where you're in trenches. And it uh, – I was getting some World War II flashbacks. But <laughs> it was uh, just infinite spawning enemies that you're supposed to push down a hill. And it was just – it was just mental. So, oh yeah. yeah. It well, wasn't as bad as World of War. It was harder than the Modern Warfare games, except for maybe the Favela missions on Modern Warfare 2. But, I mean, it was it or, was rough. Uh, Mile High Club on Modern Warfare 1. Oh, dude. Did you ever do that? Did you ever, like, uh, uh, do that? I did it twice. I got so that I got, the remaster. I got all the achievements yeah. on Xbox 360, and then when the remastered came out, because I remember when I got that on 360, it was I don't know 2015, like way longer after yeah. it released. And I remember beating it. It took me like an hour and a half, two hours, and I was like, "Fuck you! I'm never doing that again." And then I saw the announced remaster. I was like, "Son of a bitch!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> there's a few times I've gotten as frustrated in a video game as doing the Mile High Club <laughs> on Call of Duty. Yeah. Because the worst thing is like you get that run where you're really close, and then like the next try you die right away, and you're like, St- I'm not progressing. I'm not getting the wor- better. <laughs> the worst thing is missing the headshot at the very end. Yep. I've done uh-huh. that. Oh my god, it, it's that happened a couple times. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, I love going back to those old Call of Duties though and mm-hmm. playing them. There's just something about Call of Duty has. You can say what you want about the story, but I feel like the gameplay of Call of Duty has always been great. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe set aside the first three games because those are just older and you know. Yeah, still trying to I mean, there's a certain out. respect to it, but yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. But like since Call of Duty Four, for sure, onward, it, there's just I think that there's no better feeling shooter out there. It's like Goldeneye, like you know, mm-hmm. there's no doubting like the impact that that game had on. Uh yeah the industry and, and people but like you know you go back and play it now i would so um great <laughs> i would say that maybe um like destiny 2 or um titanfall 2 um those guys those games do feel pretty good those games oh feel pretty God. good, especially destiny 2 so and i i'm sad that, like that we probably won't ever get another titanfall game nah, i think we, will, uh, we might i i'd be surprised yeah. if we couldn't that's a i think that's a discussion for a later time because yeah. i i think that You'd be surprised. I think it is happening. Personally, see, I don't have my nose in the industry as much as you do. So you, you, if anyone would know, it'd be you. <laughs> oh, I'm sniffing around. I'm sniffing around in every corner. I mean, All I right, poked guys. my head where I didn't need to, and that that you saw where it got me. <laughs> yeah, no joke. We'll have to tell that story sometime on the podcast. <laughs> but anyways, that's what we've been playing for this past week. Now, boys, before we move on to the news, I do have another special question for both oh, man, of I you. I just read it too. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can. You guys have the Google Doc now, so you can read it. Um, the question is simple: Is a hot pocket a ravioli? Is a hot pocket a ravioli? I mean, I guess so. It just doesn't have the sauce. <laughs> it does have sauce, though. Well, it's inside of it. I mean, like it doesn't. It's not smothered. Like it's not like a, a soup like ravioli. Whoa, time out. You don't need. I'm talking about a ravioli, not like. Campbell's ravioli or whatever. I'm talking about chef. Like a ravioli. That's a, that's the only ravioli I've ever had. A chef. That's all I have for reference. You've never had just ravioli. No. You've never had homemade ravioli. No, I don't really care for Italian what? food. What? Dude, that Roger, am, am I insane or is I this mean, normal? I 
I, I've had homemade ravioli and stuff. I've had more than just chefs, but like, uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how like normal or normal that is. I'm not I mean, that's chef just... is better or anything. It's just that's all I've had for reference. No, I know. I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you're saying that chef's better. I'm, sure it's I'm good. Kind of, I'm kind of baffled that you've never had like real fresh ravioli. Like that's kind of baffling to me. No, nah, it's just like with with Italian food. I've just never been the biggest fan of it, so I just never really get explore the. Uh, you know, the menu. That's wild. Because I feel like you, even you like should probably you should probably next time you're at an Italian restaurant order some good ravioli because there's some good yeah, out there. Fresh mm-hmm. good ravioli because let me tell you, chef's ravioli, it might feel good because you're hungry, but that stuff is dog food. It basically. does it does pale in comparison. It is awful compared to real. I mean, ravioli. I've, I've I know like I, every every time I go back to Chef Guardi, I remember loving it as a kid. But whenever I have it, like when I'm a, like you know it's a bad week, I don't have much money. I'm like, what's in the cabinet? Oh, Chef Guardi, I like Chef Guardi. Put it in the microwave. I eat it, and I'm like, this isn't good. It's just not good. Nope. No. It's There's one time where I went back to the kid cuisine stuff one time just to try it, and it was just the yeah, worst tasting thing I've ever had. I'm like, I, how do they eat these? Oh yeah. You yeah. keep the plastic like, on there when you heat it up and everything. When I was a kid, that's all I ate was kid cuisine, and now it's oh yeah. Just, I had, those, stuff. I had a similar one too like I, I when i got older i was like i, I can't remember what brand they were but there was a similar thing you know uh, you know this plastic box meals you throw in the uh, <laughs> yeah microwave. yeah well um so are the we, corn was uh, always cold are we all agreeing that it is a ravioli yeah one? it's it's a ravioli I, yeah, yeah. I, it's, I guess so yeah, yeah this isn't this isn't as a <laughs> as such a hot topic issue as the what was the last week's cereal is soup or something soup, like that yeah. Cereal we, soup. We went on like Susan a, does not agree with that at all. Like I, she was like, I've been wanting cereal, and I'm like, oh, you mean soup? And she's like, no. <laughs> well, I'm glad that we can come to a consensus about this about the ravioli in a hot pocket because I think you would have to be some sort of madman or mad lad, mad woman, to think that it's not. Um, but there are those people out there in the world, and they are not afraid to share their opinions. All right. Well, there you have it. I mean, I guess now that you have said that we've decided that Hot Pockets are ravioli, I've definitely had ravioli before. (laughs) I wouldn't say those are fresh either, but uh, (laughs) moving on, we're going to go ahead and move into the news of the week. Roger, play the news theme. Da-da, da-da, da-da. Da-da-da-da-da. Was that the Metal Gear? (laughs) bum bum ba da dum 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 Ah, ah, ah. Oh my gosh, thanks for those levels over there. All right, number one on the docket. PlayStation 5 is real, and people are playing them in a controlled environment. Also, we're not allowed to see the UI. Um, Coming from businessinsider.com, I would tell you who it's written by, but it's in Japanese, so I'm so sorry if they're listening, uh, but I thought they are. Uh, The title says, I got to play two games on the PlayStation 5 before the new game console launches. Here's what it's like. Down below, the PlayStation 5, Sony's latest game console, is due to be released on November 12th. The cancellation of promotional events due to COVID-19 has meant there are very few people around the world that have had a chance to see the machine in action, aside from those involved in its production. But at Business Insider Japan, they were among the first in the world to try out gaming on an actual PS5 and to be able to capture shots of gameplay. Though they weren't allowed to explore the console's operating system, the UI, were also allo- they were allowed hands-on two games. Um, 3D action game Astro's Playroom, which comes with the PS5, and the action RPG Godfall, which looks like a budget THQ game that was uh, added by me, which will be released at the same time as the PS5. So, boys... We talked about last week how people were getting these Xbox Series Xs and things, and we are like, oh, man, PlayStation's really falling behind. And then it seems like the day after PlayStation was like, oh, by the way, you guys can come in and play the console. I do want to say, before we get into discussion, that there were a couple of key notes to point out here. Um, first is that when playing the PS5, the people that got to play it from Business Insider mentioned how they could not hear the console. Uh, we all play PlayStation here, and we all know that in higher intense games, the PlayStation 4 decides to turn into a twin jet engine and yeah. light up the whole house like it's going to take off. So it seems like Sony really um, tackled this thing hard and made it to where it is quiet as a dead mouse. Also, I want to point out that 
for PS4, PS4 review consoles were not sent out. Um, they were sent out two weeks prior to release, so even now we are not up to the timeline yet. And then lastly, there was some news after I had made up all these stories where they um, have a video up, Sony has a video up, where they actually take apart the PS5. I did not really watch it. I kind of skipped through it to see, like, okay, here it is, here it is. Um, it does have a massive heat sink on it. So, yeah, they're really looking at that overheating, that fan noise and things like that for this. So did they take it apart to show off the internal hardware for the video? Yep, uh-huh. mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, they completely took it apart. Like well. the whole really? thing inside, and they laid out every single all. piece. So, uh, what do you guys? What do you guys think? Do you think that um, Sony's doing right by having these in controlled environments? What do you think about the comment about they were going to do this whole showcase thing because Sony did say before COVID all happened that they're skipping E three, they're going to do smaller events, and they're going to do like thousand events or like thousands of events around the ro- uh, globe. Um, on the road type stuff and show people hands on within things like that. Obviously, COVID messed all that up. So yeah, let me uh, go ahead and tell me what you think about this. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Man, I mean, that is yeah. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty real. Yeah. I'm real with you. That's pretty. <laughs> pretty something i mean so we were talking i think i even titled the podcast name last week like falling in love with xbox we were talking about how xbox is doing all these amazing things um they sent out these review copies and then we did all agree i believe that sony's really dropping the ball on this like no one's playing it no one's talking about it do you think that this move was important for sony that they had to do this or i I don't know if they had to do it but i think it did move cool that they did it yeah, Roger, would you want to say about that? I mean, I literally just rephrased what Jacob said, but I guess Jacob yeah. was with me. So I, I, said, said, no, I said it first, but it's fine. He can just take all the credit. Yeah, I, I think a lot with this um, PlayStation 5 news in particular is a lot of overreaction and a lot of um, media build even, up. Yeah, I don't even know if it's overreaction. I just think there's just not, I mean, there's nothing else to do with like the new consoles like in that regard. Like there's nothing else to talk about. So we just have to take whatever we can get. I think the story mm-hmm. of the apart is cool. I think that's a that's a neat thing to do. Yeah, I, yeah, I really enjoyed that video, even though I had no idea what the guy was saying. I think a big thing is that um, people are looking over at Xbox and be like, "Wow, look at them! They're doing great. They made a video showing off the UI, and we still don't know PS5's UI." And some people are getting upset like that, like, "Oh, Sony doesn't know what they're doing. They're dropping the ball, things like that." And personally, I'm like. I'm going to see the UI on November 12th when I get the yeah. console. Like, whatever right. the UI looks like, it's not really going to affect, like, I'm not going to see it and be like, oh, I don't want a PS5 anymore. I feel like um, this was a nice thing that Sony did. I think it kind of regained confidence into the fan base. Like, oh, yeah, this thing is real. It is here. People are playing it. It works. Um, it's also cool that they showed off how quiet it is because I know a lot of people were – a worried about the size of it because it's massive. This console is a massive thing. If you've seen any photos of it at all by people, this thing is a honker. Oh yeah, it's like shoulder to shoulder width. Yeah, I have no idea where I'm going to put they'll, it. They'll release head. a slim version a year or two later. Oh yeah, hopefully. I know. I I hear a lot of people that I talk to about the PS5. I'm like, are you going to get it? And like, yeah, I'll just wait till the slim comes out though. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's too big. Um, but yeah, I mean. Honestly, I put this new story in because people were being like, oh, Xbox this. I'm like, okay, well, here's Sony kind of doing it too. And it's just, you know. There's not much to say. I mean, like, yeah. you know, it's PS5. We see the games playing on it. It's, it exists. Exactly. I'll have it next month. I'm glad they're focusing on the, the fan issue. Yeah, the know, fan. I think. I know mine freaks me out sometimes when it starts going to that overdrive mode. Yeah, I mean. Oh, my God. You know, that's obviously an exaggeration about the twin jet, but it does kind of. Not if you've really. Ever, if you've ever been in a plane, it kind of sounds like a plane starting up. It's like, dude, what are you doing down there? You're gonna explode on me? So. And it, it wakes um, me up, and I gotta start checking for turbulence. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's like it, it, you don't even play something that's that graphically intense, and it's like, here we go. <laughs> it's just uh, badly optimized games, I think. I mean, the whole system's badly optimized. That's the thing. I love my PS4, but it, it's not. Like I have better performance out of my PS3 most of the times. 
I'm really hoping that with the PS5, what they did, and I know this is so boring, but I hope they take everything from the PS4, put it on the PS5, but make it run really well. You know what That's I would love it. if they did? <laughs> is I just want not to make it make it better. Is yeah, if they exactly. took all the video apps out of that video folder that's mandatory in that one update and put them back on the menu. So I'd have to sit yeah, there and wait for all these advertisements and video apps to load so I know what I'm selecting. Yeah, yeah. There's a little quality of life things like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we Maybe can, make a we not super hope, annoying but... ketone. <laughs> <laughs> you can turn that off. I did. I know. <laughs> I Yeah, I did right away. All right, well... That's about all there is for that. Oh my gosh, guys. We're yeah. messing with my nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what you're, what you're saying. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. All right, it was no, a long word. It was accidental. <laughs> gosh, come on, guys. This is, you're going to get banned. <laughs> They're can't ban messing me. with the Google Doc, and this is... Oh my gosh, whatever. All right, number two on the list. There's tons I love of you, people. Andrew. Tons of new Resident Evil stuff coming out. Uh, first and foremost, there is a new Resident Evil CG animated series coming to Netflix. This is over on Cinelinks.com, written by Jordan Mason. This morning, Capcom and Netflix revealed the first trailer for Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, a new anime series coming to the streaming service. Resident Evil fans have something beyond the upcoming game to look forward to in 2021. Capcom has partnered with Netflix to develop a CG animated series, Infinite Darkness. Bring, bringing back fan favorite characters like Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield from Resident Evil 2, the trailer definitely captures the classic serious vibes. Um, so yeah, there's a new Resident Evil CG movie. I believe that there are a couple CG movies. I believe there's three. Yeah. Have you guys? Yeah. I haven't seen them? any of them. No. Um, I, I imagine they're in like the same vein as the Final Fantasy movies, right? I believe like, what? that's what I always consider them to be is like, oh, there's the Resident Evil movies, there's the Final Fantasy movies, you know, it's kind of like, you know, they're CG movies, but they're not mm-hmm. kid movies, so it's weird because it's always like, I, I always want the more serious, mature CG movies, but then it's kind of like, this kind of looks childish. That, so. Yeah, that style of uh, CG animation, I mean, I know it takes a lot of work and stuff, and it's, it, it just kind of looks uncanny to me, so I've never really... Yeah. See, I've, ne- I've never really watched any of the... I, I haven't... I, I should say, I haven't watched any of the Final Fantasy or uh, Resident Evil CG movies just because I haven't played the couple. games, so I haven't really have any reference for the characters. I, have seen, I saw I've the actually, set. I've, I've watched the live-action ones because I know they have nothing at all to do with the game. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I haven't even seen those. I've never played a Final Fantasy game, but I've watched two of the movies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's hilarious. Hey, Roger, if you've never seen a Resident Evil movie, go on Netflix. They're all on there. Just marathon. Oh, yeah. I, I know. Wonderful. It's, it's something I've always wanted to do, but I just never like took the time to sit down and actually watch them. Andrew and I, we watched one. Wasn't it great? Um, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> Listen, I, they look similar to uh, the Underworld movies, and I absolutely adore those movies, so oh, yeah. I'll have a great time it with them. Def- like, you definitely put them side by side, you couldn't tell which one's which. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He's not lying. Like, I was like, this is not Resident Evil. Um, yeah, I think I might... Re- so, but this is like a reboot, isn't it? Yeah, they're rebooting the movies, uh, so this is gonna be like a new franchise. And I think, uh, so we were talking about, you were talking about the Uncanny Valley earlier, uh, I know personally playing games now, um, The Last of Us Part Two comes into mind. The CG in video games is getting so good that we're starting to go beyond that uncanny valley where it's yeah. just starting to look like people. Like um, yeah. Spider-Man Remastered, it's like a completely different guy playing Peter Parker. That aside. That's because um, it, that's cause it think, literally is a different guy. Oh, I, know. I, I think <laughs> Resident true. Evil, it might work well because it's a more darker tone, darker setting. So mm-hmm. having that lighting, like not in the bright light already is going to help the CG look more realistic. And also, I don't know about you guys, but I played the hell out of Resident Evil 2 and I loved it. So yeah, it after show with game. Leon and Claire in it, I'm all for that. It was such a good game. It was an amazing game. Uh, I, I played the fell in love with the series all over again. <laughs> So, um, I, yeah, I didn't play Resident Evil 3. I want to, but it's good. I kind of wanted to, like, I kind of wanted to, like, wait for it to go on sale, which it went on sale a little bit a while ago, mm-hmm. but 
I just didn't pick it up. So I'll and probably, that's what probably I do too. I, I picked it up when it went down to twenty dollars for like the uh, yeah. The that's usually game. actually so, what I do with Resident Evil games is I just pick them up when they're twenty bucks. The only one I bought at release was Resident Evil Seven, which I don't yeah. really regret. Oh uh, well, I'm very different. But speaking of Resident <laughs> Evil Seven. Resident Evil 8 is coming out next. And speaking of Resident Evil 8, I actually don't have a news thing pulled up for this. So this is all just from You jumped a head. lot of hoops there. Capcom did announce that they are looking into porting the Resident Evil 8 game from PS5 to PS4. And that would mm. mark the first Resident Evil game ever to be released simultaneously on two different platforms. That was the other Resident Evil news. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, because we did talk about on the other episode about these games um sackboy uh miles morales uh wait Horizon, is resident evil 8 a playstation effect. exclusive what is resident evil 8 no, a playstation no, exclusive it's okay. no it's not it's on xbox but so we out. have these games along with um games like uh cyberpunk and now we have resident evil 8 and i'm sure there's gonna be other games too where they're releasing on the new consoles but they're also not releasing on the new consoles and this is nothing new um you know call of duty every year usually releases yeah, they, both. the sports game the things like that that's but just kind of yeah but like i said this is the first resident evil game ever if they do it they didn't say they were doing it for sure but they said they're looking into doing it i mean they got what? resident evil 7 on the switch in one way or another but so i i mean they could easily do that I want to get your guys' take on this. Do you think that the reason they're doing this is some trepidation for the PS5? Do you think this has to do with COVID? Do you think this has to do with um, the PS4 just selling so well and they're like, we can't leave it back that market? What do you guys yeah, think? Yeah, I think it's just the mass market, honestly. Um, but that's also like, that was the issue we faced last generation when we had our upgrade was the industry was so scared to move away from the 360 and PS3 because so many people were established on it that we got a lot of demakes and uh, you know cross-platform releases even up to like a couple of years ago we still had like 360 and ps3 versions coming out like a black ops 3 or yeah oh like, my God. you've I never can't. played black ops 3 it, on it, like i know advanced now. warfare looked so bad like there would be like stuff like a highly detailed truck on one map and then you would go to the 360 version it's just a really low poly rock yep uh-huh yep. well those were to be fair, those were made by different studios. Yes. So that's a I little just, different than this, but... I honestly think it's just a waste of resources. I mean, it's nice to have that last generation supported for people who aren't ready to upgrade, but then, you know, it's time for the next generation, and they still got a 360, and it's like, oh, why aren't there 360 games coming out? It's like, because you're old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It, time. It, 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 it prolongs the lifespan of a console when it doesn't need to, and I feel like that keeps progress from moving forward in the current yeah. generation when you focus too much on the, keeping the last generation in the loop i feel like any other year i would agree with you but mm. we already have all these things about supply constraint we already have all these things about shipping speeds slowing down um we have all these things covid obviously mm. money people aren't getting a lot of money especially in the u.s one of the biggest markets in the world we're not getting any money um unemployment is still not great things are <laughs> yeah. not great right now so any other time any other year i would agree with you and be like yeah old game old old console old move to the next thing if you want to play the next big thing i get that but i think right now with what these developers are looking at they're being like all right we need to look at this and we need to realize that we're in a pandemic right now a global pandemic and if you've noticed animal crossing for example Almost every game that's come out this year is smashing records because oh, people yeah. are bored Except and they have Mario. nothing to do, so they buy the new games that come out. So I'm sure they're looking over there at Capcom and being like, okay, we can release Resident Evil Village on PS5 only, and obviously Xbox too, which has that forwards and backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. But they're like, we can release it on PS5. What? By the, point, by the time that comes out, we're saying probably January or February, that's usually when the new ones come out. You have... 5 million PS5s, maybe. And then out of that market, how many of them are going to go out and buy a Resident Evil game? Resident Evil's big, but it, I mean, you know, it's not the biggest thing on the block. So mm -hmm. already you're cutting your market way down. And sure, maybe there are some more PS5s. And I think in a normal year, even then, they could just be like, ah, we'll release on a new console. But P 
people are hungry for games right now. People are looking for things to play. And it is kind of silly to be like, we're going to leave this 110 million market behind just so we can get the better graphics when these consoles are basically PCs now, so they can just downgrade it without really affecting the gameplay and the atmosphere mm-hmm. and things like that. So and that's I will how add I this in. Like that makes a lot of sense. And I'm just really happy because of how these new generation consoles are coming out. We won't have to worry about like last of us remastered style stuff where a game just comes out and it's like, Oh, here's the remastered one. They have to okay. buy this one to play on this. Except, console. except Spider-Man. We're already kind of getting, yes, you can still play Spider-Man, but that's the thing. Um, yeah. But like, that's a little different. I kind of, cause kind that is of. like a whole, I don't know. It's not as going to be as widespread, I think, because like we we got a lot of stuff like God of War three remastered, Last of Us well, remastered, and uh, Tomb Raider definitive edition and stuff uh, like that. Honestly, man, I don't know because that other thing, the um, what was it, Devil May Cry five, that was shown yeah, special after, edition. Yeah, so like I think even with the backwards compatibility, these developers are going to try to double, triple, quadruple dip on their games. Um, I'm going to see. Like I bet you anything, it's not going to be as effective this generation though. Yeah, because I can that... see a lot of people like, oh, I want to play Tomb Raider. I like that game. I, I don't have a 360 anymore. I'll buy it again. Uh, but this one, it's like, why would I buy it again? I can play it on here. Unless yeah. you really, really are invested in that franchise, like with Spider Man. Like, I really like that first game. I'll buy it for 20 bucks again. Well, actually, um, um, so I think before... it depends on the price. How much is Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition going like to be? $40, I think. 40 Because uh, yeah. I never played that game and I always wanted to. So that I think I was waiting for it to go on sale, but they always have it like. They, they never goes on sale for a decent price. Before I break your heart, Jake, I do want to yeah. get to Roger real quick. Roger, did you have anything to say about all that? Um, I, I, not really, I guess. Uh, yeah, just what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, what I was going to say, Jake, is that I got bad news for you about that Spider-Man remastered. Oh, the yeah? only way that you can get that Spider-Man remastered game is if you buy the deluxe edition of the Miles Morales game for sixty nine ninety nine. Well, that's what cannot... oh, wow. It's only twenty okay. bucks more than the Miles Morales game. That's why I said it's twenty. All right. Well, you said for twenty dollars, and I was just going to be like, you can't buy it alone. You can't buy. Well, it no, yeah, I was going to buy the deluxe edition, and that you know that's technically just an extra twenty bucks for the game. Okay. I mean, okay. honestly, on Resident Evil going backwards compatible, it, it I don't know, it just kind of I know it's not. I didn't know that though. But... But it just kind of makes sense. I mean, mass market, new consoles mm-hmm. coming out. It doesn't really surprise me. I agree. And also, I think now more than ever, because people will be like, oh, yeah, it's the first Resident Evil game to ever do this. Well, this is also one of the only Resident Evil games to release in a transition year like this. Yeah, they um, usually don't. Yeah, Resident Evil 6 released, um, I think, like two years before the new consoles came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, 7 was right smack in the middle. I guess you could say Resident Evil 4, but there's a whole slew of things about that game. A lot of weird things. <laughs> that game's that on game. every console. It's like Skyrim. Yeah, yeah. so um, I think we're just in a specific time period, and the stars are kind of aligning with this game. And, I mean, I know, as someone who's getting a PS5, even though it's backwards compatible, even if it might have an update, I'm going to get it on PS5 only because there's no point in me. I'm never yeah, I mean, why would you like, not? I'm never going to be like, oh, let's play the PS4 version. Like, no, I'm I'm going to play mm-hmm. the best version I can get. Yeah. So. Well, that's about it for that. Hopefully you all are looking forward to playing Resident Evil 8 and maybe checking out that Infinite Darkness series coming to Netflix in 2021. But for now, we're going to move on to number three, which is Destiny 2 gets much, much, much smaller. Um, Written over on GameSpot by Eddie Makuch, Destiny 2 developer Bungie is making some changes to how it updates the game, and for the upcoming Beyond Light expansion, this means you'll need to re-download the entire game. But this move comes with some good news as well. Bungie said in a blog post that it recognizes this could be a, quote, painful, end quote, problem for people with slow internet or caps on their data. Quote, we're sorry about that. End quote, Bungie says. The reason for the redownload, or ellipsis, the reason for the redownload requirements is that Bungie has, quote, revamped its content building and patching pipeline, end quote, to help make downloads get smaller and install faster. Due to Destiny 2's tremendous size, it currently takes more than 24 hours for a developer to get new patches ready, but with the Beyond Light expansion, this drops down to below 12 hours. Additionally, Bungie is removing content from Destiny 2 that has been 
that has since been upgraded or replaced. Bungie refers to this as, quote, dead, end quote, content, and it's being removed with the Beyond Light expansion. As a result, the total install size for the game will drop by 30 to 40 percent. Destiny wow. 2's file size will now be between 59 and 71 gigabytes, depending on your platform. So, guys, Destiny 2 is dropping in size dramatically, almost 50% on some platforms. Do you think... So, okay, they're getting rid of some old content to do this. Also, they're optimizing it better. We already have this problem with smaller storage because of the SSDs and stuff. Are you guys for game developers cutting out content or replacing content to make it smaller? Well... Do, do they give me specific information on what content they're cutting? Um, yeah, they did. So they um, said that a lot of the things from the base Destiny 2 game, um, like some areas and regions and some weapons and things like that that haven't been used in years um, yeah. or have been replaced by new updates with new planets and new areas and things like that, they're cutting that stuff out. And also, I'm not 100% keen on the Destiny 2 lore, but I know that some things have happened, some things have been destroyed, some things have been like cut off. So that yeah. content's still there, but now they're kind of replacing it or mm-hmm. getting rid of it. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting what happens if you buy Destiny 2 for the first time, what that initial playthrough will be like compared to what it was back when it released. I guess it just kind of depends what they're cutting. Because I think like old weapons and old loot and stuff, that's not a huge deal. You see that in other games. When they like go on for a pretty decent life cycle, uh, it, but I don't know. I when it comes to content, there's goods and bads of it because there's the whole aspect of there's so much to do that that you can like you know you can kind of just do anything and not be bored. But there's also like there's just a bunch of busy work too that can make you feel like you're not really accomplishing anything. So I guess it just depends on how they handle it, especially with their new content. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, when I first read about this, my first thing, um, I have this like FOMO with games. We're like, oh, I need to play Destiny 2. I need to go to those places that are going away. But then I was also like, I don't care. I, yeah. I, I haven't bought the DLC. And honestly, these are probably places where, I don't know, some enemies popped out, you shot them, and then you moved on. You know? Yeah. Nothing too. Well, and the thing is, too, like, this is technically an MMO shooter. And MMOs get updated all the time. They lose areas. They lose content. That's just the standard for MMOs. Um, if it's something like Zelda, where you're like, "Oh, we're updating over in a time, we're cutting out Kakariko Village for a new village," it's like, "Okay, that's something. That's that's that. You can't do that." Yeah, Great Pato's um, gone. But like, if, if if it's if it's something that doesn't really affect the the plot or like the landscape, I don't know. If it's something that's already been like not accessible, what's the point of keeping it in there? I would kind of argue about that. Um... Ocarina of Time, uh, whatever example that you have. Um, obviously not with a single player, but if Ocarina of Time was a multiplayer game, and mm-hmm. they're like, we're cutting out Kakariko Village. Well, that was more of my like my point. It's like if it if it was like if this was a single like purely single player game, and they made that decision, it's like oh, well I can't experience the game like I loved it anymore. But this is a game that's constantly evolving and moving forward, to where like it, it yeah. Like, it was like with WoW. Like, WoW Classic, you couldn't play it for years because of how much they've updated it, and they brought it back. So now you can play WoW Classic. Destiny 2 Classic, anyone? Yeah. Destiny 2 is so weird because it is it is, it is an MMO, but it's also muchly not an MMO. It's such a hybrid. Um, I beat that game by myself. I mean, you know, we were supposed to play it. And yeah, yeah. And then I beat it by myself. And there is a story there, and there are things that happen, and you do visit every area on that campaign. And now I don't know what they're cutting out, but they said they're cutting out old content. So when I go back, um, I downloaded it on Susan's PlayStation 4 because it's free, and we're going to go back and play through it. And now I'm like, what is, What did they cut out? Like, And even if it was an area with some busy work and stuff, that's still part of the game that they're taking away from you. So Mm -hmm. I don't think in Destiny 2 it's that big of a deal, but I do think that this could set a bad precedent for other games Mm -hmm. that maybe they'll um, have things where they'd be like, hey, we're going to do this update where it cuts the size of the game by 20% on 
November 1st, three months after launch. But this whole starting area is going to go away. So you better buy the game at $70 or you're not going to be able to experience. You know what I mean? Like they could yeah. do things like that and it could be abused really easily. So I'm I wonder. Of two minds. No, I'm sorry. Of two minds with this. Uh, that was, I, I'm of two minds with this. That's it. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, I thought you. I thought you were gonna like, make conclusions. Yeah, I, I, it, it kind of sucks, but it's it's at least for me, I'm not too attached to Destiny like I was with Halo or like. I think that's the problem. Is I don't think any of us like stuck with Destiny past when it came out. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm I wonder what the general reception is for people that like have consistently played it with all the DLCs and updates that they've given. Mm, well, I've heard of people that do play it all and like. For them, of course, they're like, oh, whatever. This doesn't affect us all. If anything, it frees up storage space, which is a big problem. Um, what immediately came to mind was with Call of Duty. That game yeah. is getting so big that it was just reported oh that God. if you have a 250 gigabyte hard drive, it does not fit on there anymore. That is ridiculous yeah. for one game. I don't care how big your game is. Call of Duty is massive, but no. You need to learn how to compress some files over there, homie. Like That's too much. Uh, They've ridiculous. always been bad about that. I mean, I would have, have given maybe yeah. the newest one a pass since they Warzone's like it, almost just another game entirely. Um, yeah. But yeah. they, but the fact they've always done that, you know, ever like just, just, just that's just what they've done with you know the past ones. Black Ops Four was huge. World War Two was huge. I mean, yeah, I mean, for like, no really reason. Uh, Cold War. I mean, that you're just gonna have to take up that whole one terabyte on your console with that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You never know. Be careful what you look for. And it's going to have Warzone too. So, yeah, that would be kind of scary how big that game would be. Yeah, Warzone with um, uh, ray tracing and 4K graphics. You better watch out. Oh, God. It's going to double the size of everything. Uh, all right. We'll go ahead and move on to number four, which is the Switch Pro seems more real every day. Uh, almost stumbled on that because it says the Switch problems seem more real every day, which I guess that could be a headline too. But not this time. We're over at comicbook.com. Awesome URL that someone got that. Uh, this is by Tyler Fisher, which says, Nintendo Switch Pro leaked by retailer. The long-rumored Nintendo Switch Pro has been leaked by a retailer, suggesting the rumors that next year Nintendo will look to add an upgraded version of the Switch to the already existing Switch and Switch Lite family of consoles are true. The leak comes way of Media Market, a relatively major retailer in Europe, which recently updated its website with multiple references to a Nintendo Switch Pro. In fact, the console will populate will populate when searching for the Switch, Switch software, and Switch accessories, or at least it did. By the time we're reading this, it's quite possible, and it is confirmed, that these references to the console have been erased from the site. Now, unfortunately, this is all the retailer leaks. There's nothing else about it. While there are multiple references to a Nintendo Switch Pro, there are no details shared about the console, which does possibly point to these being placeholders based on all the rumors of an upgraded Nintendo Switch that have been circulating recently. Uh, recently. So, Nintendo Switch Pro, it's a big rumor that everyone seems to bring up once a month. This retailer might have leaked it, but as the um, article said... Retailers make their own inventory, and a lot of times they try to put placeholders for things that they're expecting. On this leak, all it said was Nintendo Switch Pro. That's it. We didn't get date. We didn't get price. We didn't get anything. No explanation, no software, no nothing. All it said was Nintendo Switch Pro. Do you think... I'm going to kick it over to Roger first. Roger, are we getting a Nintendo Switch Pro? And then also, do we even need a Nintendo Switch Pro? Well, what I was going to ask is, I mean, I could see us getting a Switch Pro. I don't know. I think if we get it, it won't kind of be what we think it is. If, if they made a Switch Pro, how do you guys think they would, like, like what specifically would they upgrade? How do you think they would handle that? Um, I think the best and, like, the biggest thing out of a Switch Pro would just be better performance. Uh, there are a lot of games that are, like, you would think wouldn't have any trouble running on a normal Switch, but they do. Uh, and I don't know if that's Nintendo's fault or the publisher's fault a lot of times, um, but like, oh. even some of the Nintendo published stuff doesn't even run great on it. Uh, how how but how could you make it run better while still keeping it in that like handheld accessibility 
you know, porn. I think one of the big ideas that everyone has, or at least one of the common conceptions for it, is that it's going to be a Nintendo Switch console that's slightly more powerful, but they'll do a lot of um, the work in the dock. They're going to upgrade the dock and make it to where it works with the Switch. Kind of like with PSVR, a PS4 alone can't run VR, but they have that little breakout box that does extra mm. processing power and stuff. So that seems to be the general general like theory is that, oh, it's going to be Nintendo Switch Pro and they're going to have it. It's going to be docked only or something, which mm-hmm. isn't even a Switch at that point. Well, yeah, um, that's why? my that's my worry. Like we all want a better performing switch, but I feel like the draw of that is the the handheld pick it up, put it down, instant switch, I that sort of aspect to it. I'm afraid that's take either, away from that. Yeah, I think the smart thing for Nintendo would be to wait. Um, I think two more years. I don't think this is coming out next year. By the way, I just want to get that out there now. Nintendo no. sticks to the five year cycle unlike any other console manufacturer they do five years five years five years and they've been doing it since i think i mean i think since the, the NES. Super nintendo or the super now, nintendo the nes yeah. was six years because they, six they years. actually it was seven years here in the states because yeah they, they were just right. they weren't planning on making another console until the genesis came out yeah but since the super nintendo they have been on that five-year cycle like clockwork and i think they're going to continue with it now and what i think happened is that the switch is a meteoric success compared to the Wii U, compared to other yeah, consoles, no it's about on pace with the PS4. It's actually, like, if you do day-to-day, like, where the PS4 was at its life cycle, it's a little behind the PS4. So I think it is going to start trickling out eventually. Um, but I think the Switch is going to become the handheld of the Nintendo family, and then they are going to go back and make this home console that can run games better and do things better and i don't know if they're going to do things kind of like with the ds um they had like smash on wii u and smash on 3ds and there was some communication between it but it wasn't like picking up off of the home console and playing it because at this point the switch isn't even on par with the ps4 and the xbox one so if nintendo went out and made a pro console if anything it'll be on par with a Xbox One S and a PS4 Pro, maybe. Even then, mm-hmm. I find it so hard to believe that yeah, a I hybrid too. Nintendo console can run 60 frame 4K. I just, it, I no. don't believe that. It's just, the thing is that, like, and I think me as well as a, most of the consumer base have kind of looked at Nintendo as not the place to get their high. Like, you're not going to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla with ray tracing and 60 fr- 120 frames per second on a Nintendo console. That's not going to happen. Nintendo's yeah. never been focused on having the best hardware. When they have had it, it's just by happenstance. Yeah, um, they've been more about the features and the, you know their games on it. Like they can, I, like you look at Mario Odyssey. That's a beautiful game. Sure, it could look better on PS4 Pro, but it's impressive that's on a handheld. I'll yeah, give it so, that. But in, in so, Nintendo is very gimmicky. They feature more on uh, hardware than they do on. Or like the, the the things the hardware can do, not so much of the things the hardware can run. I feel like the Nintendo Switch is only successful because it has Nintendo games. And let me explain mm-hmm. what I mean by that. Um, that one thing, that one statement you said right there, uh, it's impressive that it runs on a handheld. I feel like that has been the motto for the Nintendo Switch this whole life cycle is, but yeah, oh, well, I mean, it's but... impressive that it ran on a handheld. But no one is ever like, this is a really amazing game, and it's awesome, and it's fantastic. I don't think anyone out there is being like, Mario Odyssey is the best 3D Mario. In fact, I think most people rank it pretty low. It's not a bad game by any means. It no, I enjoyed well. it. I love the game. But I think when you compare it to like Galaxy, 3D World, Sunshine, it's not on par with those games. It's... Fine. No, I'd say it's more like on par with Mario 64, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. A game from um, 1996 it's on par with. Like, it looks... But that's kind of what they were aiming for with that game as well, was to hit that kind of style Maybe. of game. Have I those mean, small contained worlds. Not but so even much... then, I think those small contained worlds are there because on the Switch, once you start making the worlds bigger and stuff, you have to render more, you have to load more. Mm-hmm. I honestly think that Mario Odyssey is an example of constraint of restrictions mm-hmm. the switch couldn't do more so they did what they could with the switch but i i honestly so nintendo always does his gimmicks and stuff at this point 
aside from the Wii, I think it's pretty obvious that these gimmicks do not work. The 3DS does not work compared to the DS. A normal, and even I know you could well, say they just drop the 3D. Like even well, they realize yeah. that. People yeah, realize. <laughs> but I don't know if anyone's ever really bought a 3DS for the 3D. Well, that's what I'm saying. And is that's that why the they DS, cut it out. The DS meteoric success, and so was the Wii. Nintendo was smoking something great in the late aughts. Um, but the um, 3DS not as good as the DS. The Wii U, it's a joke. Even the Wii, yeah, half baked idea. Even the Wii, for as much as it's sold, you look at the software sales and the game sales for the Wii. They are low, especially compared to how many Wiis sold. They are not high at well, all. I mean, the, the the reason why everyone bought it was for Wii Sports. Exactly. Yeah, and they found they found the one diamond in the rough. But now Nintendo, what they keep doing is they keep looking for the diamond. And then you look over at Xbox and PlayStation, like, hey. If you just make a good console and you put out Mario Kart and Zelda and Metroid and all these other games that you have and they run amazing and they look amazing mm -hmm. and maybe you do still have the Switch on the side and you do your Link's Awakening on there or your 3D World or Land or whatever on the Switch. So you're still doing that and you're still getting that market. But the then thing you is, also with, with Nintendo is that their consoles, even when they were doing consoles, weren't getting great third-party support. Their handhelds got great handhelds third-party support well there's many and that's reasons. where they're really focusing on is there it's like this is their handheld that you can play on a tv i think there's many reasons for that though um you're still there right yeah okay uh, i think you cut out just a little bit at the end so i just wanted to make sure um, i think there's reasons for that though they didn't have third-party support on the consoles because by the n64 you had the ps1 which wasn't cartridge based. It was a lot easier to develop for. So of mm -hmm. course their parties going to be like, we're not going to do this cartridge thing. Like uh, Final Fantasy seven infamously was like, it was going to take like six cartridges or something. It would have been something ridiculous or maybe it was even higher than that. I think it got to double digits. So they kept making these gimmicky bad consoles, the GameCube, we're going to do micro discs. Why are well, you that was Nintendo like in defense of the cartridges. They wanted, they didn't want loading screens. Which is what they they got no loading screens. Yeah, but they also um, got no games. Like yeah. you think of the great games of that generation, they're all on PlayStation One. You know, the, our, the only RPG it ever had was uh, Paper Mario and Quest sixty four. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I mean, Paper Mario is good, on but a Quest Japanese 64. console that's not great. Yeah, um, no, not at all. It, but and, it, yeah. It, you know, it was Nintendo's uh, hesitation to not adopt CDs. They didn't want to fully adopt DVDs. They definitely didn't want to adopt Blu-rays because that was their rival Sony's product. So they have their own proprietary thing. And then they're now they're back cartridges. I honestly think that they could dominate the game market if they would just oh, stop yeah. being up their own ass. Like, they're so up their own ass and so... And, and it could be something more of, like, that was something, a relic of Awada, where he wanted more of a, like, you know, fun console, not so much like a powerhouse of a console. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I think that they got lucky a couple times, mm -hmm. especially with the Wii. I think they got lucky. It was a mass marketing well, That's when success. they were like, fuck it, we're going to do our own shit over here. <laughs> but no, that's what I'm saying, is they were already doing that. With the DS, mm -hmm. they were already doing that. With the GameCube, they were already doing that. Like They've always been like, we're going to do our own thing. Back in 1996, mm -hmm. they said we're doing that. But they just like, happened to find a success in yeah. it once, and now... Because, I mean, even with the Switch, that's not a new concept. The hybrid, like, on and off, that, that's what the Vita was. Honestly. Kinda. I mean, that if you got the cellular one, you could play your game on there and then drop yeah. it down there and go on the go. Like, it's not a new concept. But the so, thing is, Nintendo has always been unrivaled in the handheld market. That's why I think it's smart for them to look towards more of the handheld all. area. I don't like, agree with that at PSP all. The PSP sold well. Sold, like, 90 um, million. But the, the DS sold way more. Okay, but yeah, the and, DS and, and, and it's not like Sony couldn't make a competitive heart, uh, handheld, but they just stopped. No they one did it, just like stop. I agree, they, but like like the Game Gear was also something that you know say, was decent against the the Game Boy, but they just stopped. To say that they weren't rivaled, though, it, I don't think that's fair at all because the PSP sold better than the Game Boy Advance. It sold be better than the well, Game Boy. Well, it sold Boy better than the Game Boy Advance because Nintendo stopped supporting it, the Game Boy Advance like three years better, into its lifespan. It sold better than the Game Boy SP. It sold better, uh, like it's almost on par with the 3DS. Like other than the DS, the PSP 
gave Nintendo a run for their money. Now, there's so many reasons why the Vita failed, and I don't think it's because of Nintendo. I think it's because Sony turned the barrel on their face mm-hmm. and shot it five times and then said, left the body. <laughs> but, like, my point was, historically, <laughs> like, Nintendo honestly, has like, never lost in the handheld market. Except they have. That's what I'm saying with PSP. They did. No, I'm saying, but, like, Nintendo purposely killed the Game Boy Advance brand to promote the DS. Because the DS had a Game Boy in it, why would you buy a Game Boy Advance? And I mean, that's with, what they did with the Switch. They they tried yeah. the three color system before. They killed their own. I mean, that's not to say that. That's still like, I think that Nintendo has been challenged many times, and I do not think they've been the de facto handheld champion forever. I think that the Game Boy original they were, and with the DS they were, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. And even now. This and is one... I'm not saying like their competition's never been quality though. I'm saying like they have had oh, no, competition, but they've always had that market because of they were smart about what they put in it. They made so, it like a Well even then and we don't bring this up and I know a lot of people don't even consider this mm-hmm. because obviously but Nintendo has been decimated in the mobile market and that's with cell phones and iPads. Mm-hmm. No yeah. one goes yeah, out and buys. Cool. And that's why they made the Switch, because it was obvious with their 3DS. Uh, that's set, aside the, Wii U. <laughs> set aside the 3D gimmick, the 3DS was not selling well, and obviously the Vita too, because you can get it on your tablet now, and kids, they don't want Game Boys, they want tablets, they want iPads, they want things like that. So Nintendo has, in a sense, their biggest market has been taken away from them. So it makes sense the Switch happened, but I think they need to make a powerful console and i don't think it's a switch pro i think it's going to be a new home console i think if 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 they do make a more powerful home-based console from here on out this like the switch and that will have like the same games it'll be something like how xbox has their smart delivery um yeah maybe maybe this i have a hard time picturing nintendo go to just like a basic uh traditional console you know they've always had such a gimmick for such a long time. I mean, since the game, how they do stuff. I think the game yeah. was a lot. I mean, the that game had a handle. The Switch doesn't have a handle. They give up yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it would be best for Nintendo though to go back because I, I was talking about it the other day. Xbox, I think, is back to their 360 days. Um, I think it's obvious that they're really coming back full force. The games look good. Their marketing's good. Everything's looking good for Xbox. Sony is. Well, still... they're not going uh, TV. Yeah, they're not going TV this time. No sports have been mentioned at all, so that's good. Um, Sony <laughs> is still doing great. They've been doing great forever, aside from the first two years of the PS3. They've always been doing great. It would be nice if Nintendo would stop fucking around, and they would do great too, um, just on everything. Their their online sucks. Their marketing practice sucks. This whole, like... Mario 35 is only available for the end of March and all sorts. Like, all these little things that they're so... Yeah, I guess my on. argument for Nintendo is they have such a strong presence in, like, the secondary role, you know? Like, they don't they don't go for these big stuff, but they go for is a, these... Some of them are, like, these gimmicky stuff, but some of them uh-huh. are just the casual audience with the casual looks and stuff. And I feel like that's kind of where their strong suit is, you know? At least that's where they sell. And mm-hmm. they can yeah. sell a console at the same price as their competitors without having to put as much expensive hardware in it. Because they It's a very secondary it. role, yeah, to well, the I main think, consoles. I think that has to do with it, too, is that Nintendo likes money. Uh, their games never go on sale. They like their money. And I yeah. do think and it that's, has... That's to... the biggest thing I've, I've noticed, too, is, like, you know the Nintendo Select line. They make yeah. the titles $20. There is no way in hell Pokemon should not be a Nintendo Select. Yeah, there is no way in hell. Um, but, Breath of the Wild. Well, Breath of the Wild. I don't know. They haven't done Nintendo Selects on that. I'm trying to think. They those do do go on Nintendo Selects, the Zeldas and the Marios. Mm-hmm. Um, but like other big Pokemon, sellers, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this Pokemon is yeah. Pokemon should be the one that like the first one that hits Nintendo Selects, but it doesn't. And Definitely. I don't know if that's Pokemon Company or Nintendo. It could be. It's probably Pokemon Company, but it's know. whoever publishes it. The publisher. So I think that would be Nintendo. They publish the game because their logo comes up front. So they'd be the one saying what the price is selling for. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Though I have noticed with the 3DS Pokemon games, they did have some price drops recently. Yep. But not not the Nintendo Selects price drop, but 
yeah they a slight price drop yeah mm -hmm. i've seen that too which i was like oh look at that that's cool um so that's going to be it for the nintendo talk today i'm sure next episode we will get into it more um, mm -hmm. and every episode on from then but we have one more news topic for you today before we get into the video game releases. And that is number five, Minecraft Caves and Cliffs update. Uh, so I picked this one because Minecraft is one of the biggest games on Earth still to this day. And it seems like after a long dormant time of getting these little smaller incremental updates, it's never really stopped updating. But this Caves and Cliffs update, as Roger's sister could tell you, is a really big <laughs> deal. Um, this, is over, this, this is over on PCGamer.com, written by Lauren Morton. Uh, Minecraft Cliffs and Caves and Cliffs update. Everything we need to know. Um, excited for Minecraft Cliff, Cave update. Over the years, Minecraft has made improvements to all sorts of areas in its blocky worlds in various Minecraft updates. Refreshing everything from the ocean to the nether. At long last, its caves are getting an overhaul with new world generation to bring some variety to your underground activities. The Caves and Cliffs update is adding new plants, mobs, tools, and special new redstone signal block to boot. Mo Yang gave out tons of details about the update during the Minecraft Live presentation in October, and boy, there's sure a lot to keep track of. Uh, and then it goes into blah, blah, blah. Here's all the things that they do. A lot of new mobs, a lot of new things. Um, did you guys see anything about this update or hear anything about it, Roger? Yeah, so, oh my god, my, yeah, my little sister watched that entire uh, live stream or whatever it was, and it was, uh, we play Minecraft together every now and then, and we they just came out with another update that we were kind of looking at, and that was interesting, but yeah, the, the Clifton whatever i mean they're just kind of revamping the whole thing which they need to because the caves have been the same uh -huh, forever pretty, I mean, pretty much since that game came out yeah and uh they're revamping the caves they're making the the mountains completely different and some wider and bigger i mean they're just doing a bunch of stuff to it but good. i mean i don't know in my opinion it's it's just, it's a minecraft update you know like you said they always been dishing out stuff to it and this is just this is the next one new one it looks interesting it looks neat i think it the mining is such an integral part of the game i mean it's literally 50 percent of the name that uh <laughs> yeah, no joke a, a um, revamp to it would be a good thing yeah now I, we're gonna have to get a uh, minecraft classic on the on the such a yeah, such no a joke. pixelated yeah. juggernaut you just <laughs> What, to play Minecraft Classic, you just got to go back to, like, 360. Oh, you just scroll through the update list. Um, yeah, so I saw this update, and, I, you know, I played Minecraft back in the day because everyone played Minecraft. And I even, um, I think I played it this year once or twice because I have some friends that are into it. But I just, I don't know about you guys, I can't find myself to be excited or even to care about Minecraft anymore. There's so many other games coming out. We have new consoles mm -hmm. releasing, and... You know, I'm sure there are those people out there, but I'm not going to get the new PlayStation and buy Minecraft again. Like, no, that, that's my day one purchase. I'm getting a PS5, downloading Fortnite, buying Minecraft again. That's it. Yeah. I'm going to have this generation. And yeah. I'm getting all the new skins. Minecraft Literally and, endless games right there. Why would you need another one? Minecraft and GTA 5, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. GTA 5, once again. Here we go, boys. Um, I did up for the third generation in a row. I did see that Minecraft was also getting an update on PlayStation. They got a PSVR update. So you, if you wanted to experience the hellish world of Minecraft in VR, <laughs> where everything is a fucking cube, that is something you can do now absolutely free if you own the game. Um, but yeah, I don't... This is big for people. People love Minecraft. They still have Minecraft Con, which that's a convention that didn't get canceled. So it's big enough to survive COVID. Really? Um, it didn't get canceled? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's where the news broke was, um, Michael, I don't know if they had guests and stuff, but they definitely had the convention still. You have, so, have, you, what guests do you have for a Minecraft convention? Oh my so, gosh, dude. Streamer? Go on YouTube and look up, like, Minecon, you know, compilations. You get um, Captain Sparkles up there. You get Jeb. You get the uh, worst just YouTubers. people asking yeah. questions ever. Like, it's... We're, we're, we're not going to have County Reese come out on Minecon and start talking about the new updates. Like, you're, you're a block. block. <laughs> you're a block. 
Oh, I like going back to Minecraft every now and then and kind of experience with all the add to it and stuff. Yeah. And, uh-huh. you know, kind of like what you said, if I have a friend that, like, you know, is into it, I don't mind playing with it. It's never a game I mind playing or anything, but definitely um, it's not one that, you know, I consistently stick with or anything. It's like an occasional visit. And then, you know, if I have, um, I have a buddy that likes to play it, I might play it with him. That's about it. Yeah. Like my little brother, he's gotten super into Minecraft recently. So, like, whenever I get a chance to go visit, I'll like sit down and play minecraft with them either on my phone or on a switch i got them as someone who uh works with kids a lot i mean minecraft is as big as it's ever been for like, it's so crazy how like you know we were in middle school when that like got big and it's still big with kids yep dude i remember when that was uh it wasn't even released it was technically a baby no, yeah I there remember. wasn't even like barely mobs in the game like you it remember when worlds and so much fun. I remember when Fortnite. Minecraft Hunger Games was the biggest thing. Oh my god, and then that turned into Fortnite. <laughs> yep, <basically. laughs> That's exactly what happened. Um, Alright, so yeah, there you go. Minecraft, uh, go get that update, play it. Play it in VR if you hate your life. Um, anyway. I mean, hey, uh, it, you know, honestly though, I will say, when Minecraft got into Smash, that's that, that peaked my, you know, I, my, my expectations for uh, Minecraft were met. I finally got everything I wanted out of life. That was it. <laughs> All right, boys. So um, we're going to go ahead and move into um, something new over here. Before we get to the new releases of the week, I do want to do this thing. Now, as you know, every month on various websites such as or uh, various memberships such as PS Plus, Xbox Game Pass, things like that, you get a slew of free games, added games, and, um, you know, of the sorts. So I went ahead and made a list of all the big gaming subscriptions that I could think of and I compiled them on here, and I'm going to go ahead and go through each one of these. And then at the end, I just want to tell you, like, I want you to tell me what you think is the best one, what you think is worth the money. Um, all of these range from 5 to $10 a month and things like that. And obviously, there's different subscription models you can do. But I'm going to go ahead and go through them real quick. And then, yeah, I just want your input on it. Sound good? Sure. All right. Well, first up, coming to PS Now for the month of October, we have Days Gone, which is on there until January 5th. We have the Medieval Reboot, Friday the 13th, Trine for the Nightmare Prince, and Rad. Over on Xbox Game Pass, Destiny 2 Forsaken and Shadowkeep expansions are added to it. Uh, Night in the Woods, Warhammer Vermintide 2, Doom Eternal, Brutal Legend, Forza Motorsport 7, and Inkenfell. Wow. Now we got down here, those are our subscriptions. Right there with Brutal Legend. Yeah, Brutal Legend. <laughs> um, down over here, we have the free games of the month. If you have Stadia Plus, you get Laura Croft and the Temple of Osiris, Jotun Valhalla Edition, Dead by Daylight, Human Fall Flat, Super Hot Mind Control Delete, and Celeste. Down oh, on sorry, Prime, Stadia games, players. if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get these games free with Prime. You get Layers of Fear, Silver Chains, Dead Age, Surf World Series, and Jay and Silent Bob Mall Brawl. Coming to Games with Gold this month, for all month, because Games with Gold is very weird with the way that they give out the games. Um, so all the month of October, you can get Slay Away Camp Butcher's Cut. Um, from October 16th to November 15th, you can get Made of Skur. From October 1st through the 15th, this is a 360 game, you get Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. And then for, from the 16th to the 31st, another 360 game, Costume Quest, great game. Um, and then over on PS Plus, you get Vampire and Need for Speed Payback all month. As always, make sure you go and check in with the Epic Game Store weekly as they continue to give out one to two free games every single week. Now, guys, anything there that catches your eye? Uh, not really. Uh, I can tell with PS Plus and Gold, we're, we're on the cusp of a new generation by what they're giving us. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, Need for Speed Payback. Yeah. That was a movie tie-in game, I think. Yeah, it, it, it's it's like I, I like Celeste, but I already own it. I like Super Hot Minecraft Elite, but I got that for free with because I own Super Hot already. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, exactly. Dead by Daylight, everyone has that game already. Human Fall Flat, it was a meme. Lara Croft, Temple of Osiris, don't make me laugh. <laughs> exactly. Um, and with PS Now and game, I'm, I'm just kind of slash and stadia over here i'm sorry um <laughs> i mean no that's fine i mean i thought uh, prime games i don't know i don't know any of these games except for jay and silent bob but it didn't look that Lay- layers of fear i know is uh, layers of, pretty, uh, yeah layers of fear is a pretty pretty popular horror people like game. that game yeah uh, roger was there anything that stuck out for you um i don't know i never played um days gone so that might be interesting 
interesting. That's a good uh, one. Yeah. Um, but nothing else for PS Now. Um, and then Xbox Game Pass. I mean, it's Doom Eternal. I mean, that's cool. Uh, Warhammer Vermintide 2. If you if you can get a group together, that can be a really fun game. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Honestly, from Game Pass, that Destiny 2 Forsaken and Shadowkeep, I'm thinking yeah. I, I might mm-hmm. jump in and be like, because that's, that's it. That's the DLCs. Those are all of them. So Yeah, yeah I might join you because I've always wanted to kind of like try that Forsaken DLC. Yeah, yeah so. me too. They, 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 but they think they changed the uh, that one robot guy's voice actor to Nolan North. It was like yeah, uh-huh. everyone really liked him. I know it was it wasn't uh, um, I can't remember. Oh, who, who, does, who, does, who does the voice for Buck? Job. For Buck. For Buck. For Buck from, yeah. From uh, ODST. Oh. Uh, Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Nathan Fillion. <laughs> yeah, and then they got um, and then they got um. That's right. I can't remember his name. <laughs> they got him, the guy who always comes in for every video game to do his. Uh, Nolan? Nolan North. Yeah. Yeah, but it's funny because he's the ghost, too. Uh-huh, yeah. So. so I thought that was funny, but, you know, that's mm-hmm. not going to sound funny. They replaced Peter Dinklage, another actor, with him. <laughs> I do, um, do want to just emphasize that, people, I know that Epic sucks. I know that Epic Game Store sucks by making things exclusive, but please just make an account and add these games. I have had it for about a year now and i have almost a hundred games on there and let me tell you these are good games they're giving free good games i got the new total war game absolutely free i got the, the new Ooh. game last year absolutely free epic is being very generous with all that fortnite money and they're giving out some really good games for free like these are not scrap games kind of like um i know prime games a lot of the games on there are kind of like uh, these are small yeah, other than stuff. like the snk games they put on there which are you but, know, games from the 90s uh huh. But it's, like, it hasn't been great. That Epic Game Store, it's it's free. You click it, it's zero dollars. You click confirm purchase, you have it forever. Like, I cannot emphasize that enough. Do it. You hate Epic, doesn't matter. Go get those free games. <laughs> like, stop, stop messing around. Also, um, games with gold. I hate that system that they have. Just make it free yeah. all fucking month. I think they do that so it looks like there's more free games because it, you know, it's different every mm-hmm. fifteen days or whatever. That's how it used to be. It used to be just how PS Plus was, but now it's changed i don't know when they did it but i remember one day going on they were like oh that's not free they, yet they did, they did it quite a while ago i'm sure it was like yeah, hours was, ago they did yeah, it was, it was a couple years ago but it's annoying i hate it stop trying to act different mm-hmm. um, all right. i remember like it was great when they started doing that when i had the 360 because it was like i have to pay for gold so i can play with my friends but now i get games for it yeah yeah but the problem is they all all the games gold have sucked for a while now they you can have tell they put all their stuff into that game pass yeah which is that's been the, the great thing about playstation plus is they've really had some really good games especially this year oh um, yeah playstation plus is totally worth it like how many call of duty games did we get this year two i think well, yeah with, with world war Two and uh the modern warfare 2 remastered uh like modern warfare 2 remastered like just a couple months after it came out yeah um so it's definitely i mean I think I've always been in the camp that PS Plus is better than Games with Gold. Like, mm-hmm. always. Even on the low months, it's still better. Because, you know, it's nice that they're giving out these older games. But, I mean, two of the games that I mentioned were 360 games. And I know a lot of months they also throw original Xbox games in there. Which, like, yeah, this is cool, but I'd rather have a new game. So, um, that's it for the monthly free games, uh, new subscription games. We'll be doing that around the beginning of every single month. So, tune back in in November for, to see what games you get in there. But from that, we are going to move over to the new releases this week brought to you by Metacritic. And that is brought to you by Metacritic, not because they sponsored us, because but because that is where I went to see what the big games were this year. Jake, stop. What, what stop. are we talking about? I don't know what you're doing, but do not delete <laughs> anything. Stop. Um, so how this is going to work is we are going to take turns. We have a list of five games down here. And I'm going to have one of you read off the game and what platform it is coming to. I wrote the platform to the right of it. And then you're going to go ahead and read the description that I pulled straight from the game box or description or whatever it was. And yeah, that'll be it. And then we'll move on to the next person and they will read the next game. Sound good? Sounds like a plan. All right. So Jake, you will go ahead and start with our first game and then we'll move to Roger and then we'll go to me. Okay, uh, so first game that's releasing this week is Ride 4. Uh, it's coming out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. 
Um, the nice little description you've got here for it says, are you ready to live the best game experience that a motorcycle fan can get? Ride 4 will spark your competitive soul with hundreds of bikes, dozens of tracks, and a whole new level of realism. Now that, if you're not a big fan of Ride, I, I don't know. I've ever heard these names. <laughs> I'm a, I mean, it's a motorcycle game. I bet you, you ride a motorcycle. Mean, the, the last motor, quote unquote motorcycle game I played was uh, ATV Off Road Fury 2 uh-huh. on uh, yep. the PS2. Yep, same, same. <laughs> oh no, Roger. Uh, Roger? He's giving us messages from beyond. Roger, do you want to go ahead and. Um, oh, well, look at that. Roger's headset died. So um, we're actually <laughs> going to let him fix that right there. And that stinks. That means I will do the next one. Why don't you um, just put a little cut in here? It'll be fine. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and read the next one. So for the next title coming up is called I Am Dead, releasing on PC and Switch. I Am Dead is a charming puzzle adventure game from the creators of Hohokum and Wilmont's Warehouse about exploring the afterlife. Moore Slumpton is the recently deceased museum curator on a tiny, on the tiny island of Shelmerston, who is reunited with the ghost of his dog Sparky. Sparky only to discover that a disaster is about to destroy his beloved island. Together, they must uncover Shelmanstor's ancient mysteries, prevent the island's volcano from erupting, and save the place they call home. Morris and Sparky must unearth a number of Shelmerston's lost and scattered ghosts. To find them, the duo must visit the places they've spent time in, dive inside the mist in the memories of the people who knew them best, and learn the stories of their lives. To help with their mission, Morris uses his newfound power that allows him to peer inside objects and people to reveal their contents and memories. Like a supernatural x-ray, along the way you will discover many stories about the history and folklore of Somerston and its cast of curious inhabitants and visitors. Taurus Finches, the Fish Folk, Morlos, and the Legend of Aggie, the one who originally, originally silenced the volcano. Um, I want to let you guys know that this game was a Switch description, and it is probably one of the worst video game descriptions trying to sell a product I have ever read. <laughs> no, I just thought you wanted to give yourself that one because it, like, you got to hear your voice so much compared to ours. Nope. I <laughs> wanted Roger to do that one. Um, <laughs> typing that out <clears throat> annoying. Uh, it seems yeah. like Roger is still working on his thing, so we're going to go ahead and kick back over to Jake. Jake, you want to announce our next game? Yes, sir. The next game that's coming out this week is The Survivalist. It's coming out on all platforms. PS4, Xbox One, Wii, Switch, Wii U, 3DS, 3DO, nope, 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 nope. N64, NES, anything you want, you can get it on there. It's coming to modern platforms. <laughs> uh, it's a living world full of supply... Blech. It's a living world... <laughs> uh, it's a living world full of surprises, secrets, and danger... That awaits you in the Survivalist, an adventure-filled survival sandbox set in the escapist universe. Explore, build, craft, and even train monkeys with up to three friends in a desperate bid to survive. Have you got it takes with to be a Survivalist? Oh, so there you have the Survivalist coming out this week. FIFA 21 is releasing on all platforms. Football is back with EA Sports FIFA 21, featuring more ways to team up on the street or in the stadium to enjoy even bigger victories with friends. Uh, I Am Dead gets the worst longest description. FIFA 21 gets the worst shortest description. <laughs> that told me it's nothing FIFA. about the game. It's FIFA. Yep. Uh, and you want to go ahead and round us off with that last one down there. All right. And our last game for this week is Ben 10 Power Trip. It's coming out on all modern platforms. Uh, features the titular character Ben 10 from the hit series Ben 10 on Cartoon Network. And Evil Hex has cursed Europe. And only Ben 10 from Ben 10 on Cartoon Network can stop him. Explore a 3D world filled with combat puzzles and secrets as you save the day as Ben 10 from Ben 10 on Cartoon Network. Honestly, aside from that Ben 10 on Cartoon Network, which wasn't in the description, that description was much better than almost all of these. <laughs> it kind of it says it's a 3D world filled with combat puzzles and secrets and you're Ben 10. That's, there you go. Um, ben 10. All right, well. Now the question is, do you only have 10 aliens or do you have all of them? You would hope all of them, but who knows? Um, it seems like Roger is in the ether forever. Yeah, he's dead. Sorry, and everyone. With Sorry, that, Roger stands. With that, I think we're gonna go ahead and just end the podcast here. Um, if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to like it on YouTube. 
rated on podcast services. It helps us out a lot. Tell your friends about this podcast. Um, and also go check out our other podcast that we do called Doom to Repeat a Place. Uh, no, <laughs> Doom to Repeat a <laughs> History Podcast, not a PlayStation podcast. Um, I do that with my brother and another mutual friend that we have. It's a really good time. Talk about random points in history, what's going on there. And it usually involves Nazis and communism. So that's a great time. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash that one, Andrew, where there are uploads, um, if not every day, but every other day. And then, of course, make sure you check out the social medias for Roger, Jake, and myself. I will leave those in the description somewhere. Uh, Roger says, love y'all. Aww. We'll make sure to have the headset audio situation sorted out by next week. We appreciate you all with your patience and with your support. And with that, I think we are good to go. Jake, do you have anything else you want to say to the people? Uh, any closing comments? Uh, no. <laughs> I think we've got it all wrapped up. All right. That sounds good. Well, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you next Friday with another episode of The Gaming Block. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good one.